So chapter seven is all about photosynthesis. And so what we want to do is just highlight what you need to know about photosynthesis. First of all, photosynthesis has three cycles, just like cellular respiration has it. Um, remember, we have the light dependent, light independent reactions. <coughs> And that it all occurs in chloroplasts. And the chloroplasts contains chlorophyll, which is the pigment um, that captures that sunlight energy and changes it into a uh, usable form of energy, which of course is ATP. So as it say, the energy in light is used to make ATP, just like in aerobic cellular respiration, we try and make ATP. Um, this is the chemical equation for photosynthesis, which you should have seen doing your lab. Light energy plus carbon dioxide plus water gives us glucose and oxygen. And again, three events, just like in cellular respiration, you have three events. For this, you have the light capturing event. Uh, the pigment chlorophyll absorbs certain wavelengths of light and some of the electrons become excited. You have the light dependent reaction, and these use energy from the excited electrons to make ATP. And then you have the light independent reactions, where ATP and NADPH from our light reactions are used to reduce carbon dioxide and make glucose. So, three events light capturing, light dependent, and light independent. So, please take note and remember those three. So, Again, we said chlorophyll is the main photosynthetic pigment. It has two forms. You may have not figured that out or pointed that out to yourself yet. I think you should have noted it in your virtual lab. I'm not, can't remember. But you need to know for your exam that there are two forms, A and B. And so, uh, absorbs light in blue and red portions of the spectrum and they reflect the green wavelength. So chlorophyll is just not that it absorbs green light, but that it reflects green light. If you took me for science 100, you would realize that what you see is the light that's being reflected. So just remembering those two, know that you have your accessory pigments, like your carotenoids. They absorb blue and green wavelengths, reflect the orange and yellow. This is why the changing of the color of leaves in the fall happen, is because the um, accessory carotenoids are present. For chlorophyll instead of your normal A and B, which gives us a reflection of green. Now you know something that you may have not known before. Hey, yay. So light dependent reaction. Again, um, is where the excited electrons from chlorophyll are passed down the electron transport chain, and we should remember that from where? Cellular respiration. Uh, you have an ATP synthase here as well, and ATP is made. Water is split, and then all of this occurs in the thylakoid membrane, or thylakoid membrane. So remember, uh, say respiration, everything happening in the mitochondria. Here, the light-dependent reaction is happening in the thylakoid. And the thylakoid are like the stacks of those little discs that are inside of the chlorophyll that are called grana. So remembering those terms, too, would help you. All right, so then you have the light independent reaction, and this AD, ATP and AD, NADPH, sorry, from the light dependent reactions. You have carbon dioxide captured by an enzyme called Rubisco. And then glyceraldehyde is formed. Remember, we're doing all of this to make glucose. And so, again, pointing out just a few things for you here. Taking note of this figure showing that you have um, your chlorophyll, which contains stacks of flat discs. And those discs are called grana, these green discs here. And that when you have a stack of the discs, like a stack of poker chips, those are called your thylakoids. All right, and so noting that you have um, on the light capturing event, you get light, uh, and each one has its own 
a distinct wavelength, and this means that electrons drop higher at an energy level. And you have photosystems that these electrons must pass through. Uh, and there are two of those, photosystem 1 and 2. Photosystem 2 is the first one, which is sometimes makes you go, what? Because it's number 2, but number 2 is the first one. Um, it donates its excited electrons to the electron transport chain. Water is split here. Then you have photosystem 1. And photosystem 1 donates its excited electrons to NADP plus to give us NADPH. Um, it accepts electrons from the electron transport chain uh, to replace the electrons that it donates. So photosystem 1 and 2 are also in the thylakoid membrane. This will keep coming up, but the thylakoid is important, so please take note of it. So between photosystem 2 and 1, electrons pass through an electron transport chain. This creates a proton radiation. They diffuse through the ATP synthase, and then this is how ATP is made. And this is just a figure showing you that photosystem 1 and 2 electrons must pass through, go down the ETS or the ETC, which is the electron transfer chain, and through the ATP synthase to make ATP. Okay. Light independent reaction all happens in the stroma of the chloroplast. So we just got through with the light capturing event, and that happened all in the thylakoids. The light independent reaction happens in the stroma, and the stroma is the fluid or the liquid that flows through the chloroplast. And so here you use carbon dioxide, ATP, and NADPH. And this is called the dark reaction because it's light independent, meaning it does not need light. And it's sometimes also called the Calvin cycle. So you always have to be cognizant or reminded of the fact that each one can be called something different by another scientist. So someone may call it the light independent reaction, and others may call it the Calvin cycle. Please forgive me, I know that I am sometimes a little slow. Remember, I'm just coming back from um, Europe, and so therefore I am on a whole different time zone. And I realize I'm really probably still tired, but <laughs> I knew this had to get done. So the pregnant pauses, please forgive me, my brain is trying to catch up with time. All right. Now um, that we have our electrons and our ATP, and we have our carbon dioxide, it goes on to show that carbon dioxide with an enzyme called uh, rubulose bisphosphate carboxylase, or rubiscose, it breaks down into a three-carbon molecule, uh, and this gives us glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And that then goes into the Calvin cycle and helps us to generate our ATP. I uh, don't ask many questions about that, so we will not dwell on it. Uh, just like in animal cells, we see that plant cells also use organic molecules in photosynthesis like fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. Just like we saw that for cellular respiration, we can use fats, carbs, and um, proteins as well. Um, don't talk too much about the autotrophs and heterotroph relationship, but you understand that they do photosynthesis and they breathe out what oxygen so that we can take it in and breathe out CO2 and that keeps the cycle going. So that is, hey, all that you needed to know for chapter seven in photosynthesis. Making sure you pay attention to the steps of the light capturing, light dependent, and light independent reactions. Understanding chlorophyll, that there's two of them, A and B. And knowing what agrana is, stroma, and thycoloids. And you should be good for chapter six.